morning, before we jump back into our, our series on Know What You Believe, we have the great privilege this morning of one of our missionaries being with us. Mr. Ken Silva is here with Evangelism Explosion. And he's actually, you lived up in Truckee for a long time, didn't you, Ken? Tahoe City, he grew up there, but then he now travels the world sharing Jesus and teaching other people how to share Jesus. So he's one of the missionaries you support. He's in town, so Ken, come on up and share with us what God has told you to share with us. Okay. Yeah. Well, good morning. Did I need to turn this? No, I guess I didn't. That's good. Yeah. Good. All right. Well, it's so great to be here, and I uh, just want to thank you on behalf of Evangelism Explosion, my wife, my children, myself. Thank you for your support yeah. and encouragement, for your prayers. And uh, our ministry, Evangelism Explosion International, began in 1960 under the ministry of Dr. D. James Kennedy. He began training his people how to share their faith. And other churches heard about it, and his church just started growing like crazy. And uh, people from around the world started hearing about it and coming and getting training. And so he developed an international ministry. By 1995, we were in every nation of the world. And uh, it's the only ministry that, uh, well, I I'm, I'm still think it's the only ministry that's ever been able to say they're in every nation of the world. In fact, in 1995, we had one person come from every nation who was trained in evangelism explosion with their flag, their national flag, marched down the aisle of Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church, stood up front, 214 nations at that time, all representing Jesus Christ hmm. and the, the goal to win the world for Jesus. It's the only, isn't that amazing? <laughs> yeah. I look at that picture and I just get the all overs, you know, because uh, just to realize it's the only time in the history of the world that one person from every nation gathered for one purpose, and the purpose was to claim Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Man, that's just really awesome. So I'm just so glad to be part of this ministry. I was trained myself in 1970 by my pastor. Hmm. I started sharing my faith with my patients, and uh, I was a phys physical therapist at the time, and realized I'd rather save souls than souls, you know? So <laughs> so uh, went to cemetery, a seminary, and... Um, <clears throat> And the rest is history. So I was a pastor for years and just uh, applied the ministry in my church and saw lives changed and we're still seeing lives changed all over the world. This last year, uh, we were able to count 11.4 million decisions for Christ in our ministry around the world. Hmm. And uh, that's just the ones that we know about, <laughs> you know, the, the ones that are, that are still active that we're able to, to put our, our hands on and, and know what's happening. Um, and we do that not through crusade evangelism, not through special outreaches or special church programs. We do that with one-on-one, -on -one, one person learning to share their faith, sharing it with a friend, with a neighbor, with a stranger, and people coming to Christ one by one all over the world. Um, you know, Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, Paul tells us, the church, he says, and Christ gave gifts to the church. He gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastor teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. And it's in the equipping of the saints that we believe that we can win the world for Jesus Christ. I mean, you just think about it. If every single believer, well, let me ask you this. How many of you believe that if... Uh, if a Christian sincerely prayed and said, Lord, if it takes a whole year for me to learn how to share my faith in an effective way, um, would you help me to do that? Do you think the Lord would answer that prayer? Mm -hmm. Right? And if they said, Lord, if you, would you just lead me to one person who's open? One person you're obviously drawing to yourself. One person that you, you, you know, you're speaking to their heart, Lord, would you, would you lead me to that one person? Would God do that? And if they prayed, Lord, would you give me one soul this year? Would you let me lead someone in prayer to receive you as their Savior and Lord and then follow them up? How many believe that God would do that? And if every believer prayed that prayer in this church and God answered that prayer, how big is your church next year? Mm -hmm. Doubled. 
We ought to be able to double our ministries every year. That should seem, that is, it's easy <laughs> if we would just do what the Bible tells us to do. So we've been training people. I was in, uh, I just, in my prayer letter, I, you read that. Um, I was just in Jacksonville well, a few, a couple weeks ago now, and uh, we did a special training where we had uh, 21 churches were represented, and they gathered at, uh, at a little Baptist church, and we did some training in the morning till about noon, we had lunch, then we went out with 121 teams of three or four people, and we went out and just shared the gospel. We just have a very simple methodology that we, that we, that we share and we teach. And we contacted 131 people in an hour and a half. And of those 131 people, 79 of them allowed us to share the gospel. We asked if we could share the gospel with them. And of those... 79, I'm getting my numbers mixed up here. Got to get the right numbers here. Don't want to stretch it. <laughs> that was 60% 60, 60 of those that we uh, uh, approached allowed us to share the gospel. 29 or 30% of those people made a profession of faith for Christ. So 29 people in an hour and a half gave their hearts to Jesus, right? And how do we do that? Well, we say, Lord, we sit in the car. We drive to wherever we were assigned, and we sat in the car, and I, we prayed, Lord, there's someone here. You're speaking to their hearts. You're drawing them to yourself. Lord, show us who that person is. We opened our eyes, and a gal in the back seat, my, my teammate, she says, I, I see someone sitting around the side of that building. So we went, and we approached him. We said, well, maybe that's the person. And we approached him. We introduced ourselves. And uh, I said, we're from a church down the street here. We're trying to determine people's religious thinking. as just anyone who might be looking for a faith. And we're just wondering um, if we could share with you. We asked you five brief questions. He said, sure, yeah, sit down. So we sat down. I said, now, you know, we were just in that car. We were just praying. We are saying, God, would you just lead us to someone who's open, someone you're working in their heart, you're drawing them to yourself. It, could that be you? He says, that's me. I'm the guy. <laughs> I said, really? We shared the gospel with him in about 10 minutes. He prays to receive the Lord. It was such a, his name's David. I've been texting him. We've been texting back and forth. He's reading the gospel of John. He's going to his church. Uh, just an exciting thing. How does that happen? Because we ask. Say, Lord, where are they? And God leads us. So I just, just thank you for what you're doing and supporting uh, our ministry. People think it can't be done anymore, that you can't do that. And uh, we're just out there trying to show people that we can. And so our plan is to be in 52 states, 52 major cities in the next two years and doing those kinds of events. And we had eight pastors there and uh, guys that had never done that before. And they said, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> so keep praying for us. Um, we want to be used by the Lord, and he's, he's doing it. He's answering prayers. So thank you very much for your support and your prayers. Appreciate it. Hey, Ken, why don't you come back up here? Barry, where are you, Barry? And Ron, come up, would you? Ken and Ron have been friends for since God made dirt, I think, but um, <laughs> maybe not that long. Not quite that long. Yeah. And let's, why don't you two gentlemen... Get your microphone. Why don't you guys pray for him? Okay. Go ahead and pray. Father, we just thank we thank you for Ken, Lord, and the ministry uh, that he's involved with. We just uh, are so glad that he chose to do that, Lord, and to listen to you and and to follow your directions, Lord, and all the many, many people that you have led him to that have made that decision, Lord, we're just so excited um, to see the multiplication, not, not addition, but multiplication, and, um, and just the obedience that Ken and his wife and his family have had, Lord. But we're excited to be able to help him, Lord, and to support him, but we're also excited to learn from him, Lord, that um, we could do that as well and in our community and the outreach to our other churches in the area and our state, you know, in Nevada. Um, the possibilities are there, Lord, and we're just excited to see that and, and just to increase the family and, um, and just the love that you have for all the people and that, that you would do that and that uh, uh, we would see the fruits from that and we're just so excited. 
God, I just want to lift up all our missionaries. Lord, this is it's not a job. This is a life calling. And I thank you that we can be involved with it. And I just pray for a zeal, protection, the courage for Ken, protect he and Diane. Just be with them, God. Make their, their, their faith so fruitful. And I pray, God, that it would just be infectious. Mm -hmm. Just the love for you. And I praise you that we can be involved, Lord. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen.